Hello, Geometry. Uh, 5.6. Uh, we're starting to get close to the end of Chapter 5, but this one's going to add two more of our congruence theorems for triangles, the SAS and the AAS. So we're focusing a little bit more on angles this, one, this time. So SAS, of course, is going to be angle, side, angle. Notice the side is between the two angles. This is kind of the opposite of what we had earlier in the side SAS, that's side angle side, where the angle was the included angle. Now this is going to be included side. So if you have this angle and this angle and the side, that's angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle, that's what it's gonna look like. AAS is angle, angle, side. So that's when you have an angle, an angle, and a side. So angle, angle, side. That would be a non-included side. So angle, angle, side. Angle, side, angle are the two new ones. Okay, so we have 5.6. Oh, that's the back of that one. Okay. We have this chart on page 149. And we have all of the possible congruence theorems, SSS, SSA, SAS, AAS, ASA, AAA. And the question whether it's valid or not. Okay, so this first one here, the SAS, this one is valid. That one is okay to use. So SSS is valid. We've shown that, we've proven it already. That if you have two triangles that have each have the same length sides, then those two triangles are going to have the same dimensions, same angles, everything's going to be the same. It's going to be the same size, same shape. Okay? SSA is a unique one. Um, it's a sometimes, so it doesn't always work. So we pretty much say it's not one that you can guarantee right now. How I remember that is if you, if you actually look at it backwards, I say there's no profanity in geometry. So take the letters the other direction. Do not ever write it that way. Okay? But SSA is the sometimes. And what happens there, I'm going to show you a graph that I created. So here's our triangle. And notice side, side, angle. So I'm going to take, hide that one for right now. Okay, side, side, angle. That would, what, that's what it would be look like, two sides and an angle. If I take that one and put it back on, notice that red line is the same as this blue line. So that could be another triangle that is a different size and different shape, but it has side, side, angle. So that's why side, side, angle doesn't work. And that's just formed by taking your point and sliding it around, okay? So no matter what happens there, I have two triangles, one the blue one, and the other one is the red with the two parts on blue that are right there that will always form till I get out there. Okay, so side side angle is a sometimes. And we could have this one is not congruent to that sort of shape. Okay, those are not congruent. Side, angle, side, that is valid, that's okay. Side, angle, side, so that is a included angle, the angle is in there. Included angle, 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 side, that is valid, we can use that. So angle, angle, side is congruent to angle, angle, side. So this is a non-included side. So you have two angles and a non-included side. Angle, side, angle, that is a valid one. Angle, side, angle. That can congruent to angle, side, angle. This would be included angle. Sorry, included side. Angle, 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 this is a sometimes, this is a similarity one. Just because you have the same angle doesn't mean it has to be the same 
shape, or same shape, but same size. Think of an equilateral triangle. Okay, all equilateral triangles have 60 degrees, but not all equilateral triangles would have lengths of five inches or whatever. Okay, so there's all your possible congruence theorems: side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, and the final one is the hypotenuse leg, and that is a valid one as well. Okay. Hypotenuse leg would be congruent to hypotenuse leg. Okay, that has to be a right triangle. And we have all of those in our toolbox now. Woohoo! Our math toolbox. So congruent figures, we know congruent figures are things with the same size, same shape. Same size, same shape. Rigid motion, something that keeps the same size and same shape. Okay, we've talked about a lot of that with transformations, a rigid transformation. Okay, so this is the angle side angle, the official theorem there. You see we have an angle side angle. So this is what we refer to as an included side. Okay, it's the side between the two angles. And then angle, angle side, this would be a non-included side. So angle, side, angle, 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 side. Try to keep all of those straight. So let's look at some examples here. On page 151, decide whether enough information is given to prove that the triangles are congruent. If so, state the theorem you use. So our options that we have, we can use side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle. We can't use side, side, angle. Okay, I'm getting all these just basically from this. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, and hypotenuse leg. We can use those five. If we don't have one of those five, then they aren't necessarily congruent. So here they want GHK and JKH. So G is congruent to J. That's okay. And then we have GH congruent to JK. We have an angle right here. Angle H up here, KHJ is congruent to H. K, G. So you see how we have an angle, angle, and then we have a side. So that's the order there. Angle, angle, side. And that matches what we have here. See, I've started with this one angle, that angle, then I have a side. So we do have enough information, and we can go angle, angle, side theorem. Is there another one we could use? Well, I know they have a shared side right here. So I could go angle, angle, side the other way. Could I go side, side, angle? Side, side, angle. Well, side, side, angle is not one of our six, five that we have up there, so no, we can't. Angle, angle, side is what we have. Okay, here we have angle B matching up with E. We have BC matching up with CE. This would be what we call an included side. And then we have those two angles there. So we have angle, side, angle. So that is a yes, angle, side, angle. Okay, triangle JKL. JKL, the big one there, congruent to MLK, that big one there. So we have two angles that are congruent. We have two segments that are congruent. And then we have a third segment over here. So they share, they both share KL. So it looks like we have a side, side angle side side angle so that does not work no okay so even though they share that side a side side angle does not prove congruency so there is not information not enough information there for that to work okay um, this really could just be a longer side you could think about just rotating we have a circle around there, you can rotate that up higher, keep this length the same, keep this angle the same, and then this side would just get longer. 
RST and UVW, UVW. So we have this a right triangle. Whenever you look at a right triangle, you want to think about a hypotenuse leg, but you don't know anything about the legs. So I do have an angle, angle side, angle, angle side. Okay, exercise five and six, you decide whether you can use the given information to prove that triangle LMN is congruent to triangle PQR, explain your reasoning. When they give you this information, draw a triangle for yourself. It doesn't have to be a very fancy one. It does not have to be drawn to scale. So we have L, M, N, P, Q, R. So they say M is congruent to Q. So I know that one is congruent to that one. N is congruent to R. So that one matches that one, but it's not the same as the first one. And then N, L is congruent to RP. So decide whether you have enough information. We have an angle, two angles that are congruent, two angles that are congruent, and then a non-included side. Non-included, so yes, by the angle, angle side theorem. Okay, those two triangles would be exactly the same size, same shape. Okay, let's set this up again. Beat me down. L, M, N, and P, Q, R. So L is congruent to R, M is congruent to Q, so we have two angles, and L, M is congruent to P, Q. Is that right? L is congruent to R, M is congruent to Q, and L, M is congruent to P, Q. Well, here it looks like you have angle, side, angle, but here you have angle, angle, side. L is congruent to R and PQ. So no, not enough information. Okay. So what those types of questions look like on your assignment, um, just decide whether you can use a given information to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Explain your reason. Okay. Um, the, your yeses would have some sort of congruence theorem with them. Your nose would say something about the pattern for SSA or are not corresponding sides. So in this case, what I would put for this one is LM and PQ are not corresponding sides. Okay, that'd be a reason there. Hey, proofs! Everybody's favorite. Yay! Okay, prove that the triangles are congruent using the, hey, they told us, ASA congruence theorem. So that's going to be our last reason, ASA. So we have our given, we know AC bisects angle DAB. So here's angle DAB, it bisects it, that means this angle is congruent to this angle. And angle DCB, so this angle down here is congruent to this angle down here. So it looks like we have an angle, we have a shared side, then we have an angle. So statement number one should always be your given. AC bisects angle DAB, angle DCB. Again, that could be splitting up into two statements. So since it bisects, we know angle BAC, taking this angle right here, is congruent to angle DAC. Those have to be congruent. You could say the measures are equal. You say the measure of BAC is equal to the measure of angle DAC, and that is because we have an angle bisector. So I would just say definition of angle bisector. And we're going to repeat that at the bottom. So angle BCA is congruent to angle DCA definition of angle bisector. Okay, they both share AC when sides share the same thing. We can say AC is congruent to AC and that is the reflexive property. And we have now shown the angle, the side, and the angle. Okay, angle two. Step two was an angle. Step three was an angle. Four was an included side. So we can finish our proof 
triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle A, D, C. And our reason is the angle side angle congruence theorem. Triangle congruence theorem. Okay, step number, proof number eight. Prove that the triangles are congruent using angle, angle side. Okay, we know O is the center of the circle, and angle N is congruent to angle P. Okay, so we'll start with just our given, get that down. O is the center of the circle, angle N is congruent to angle P. That's good. So when you have a circle, you know that all a circle has a radius, and all the radius have to be congruent to each other. So ON has to be congruent to OM, which has to be congruent to OP, which has to be congruent to OQ. So that may be a couple steps, so we're just going to put it all in here. ON is congruent to OM, which is congruent to OP, which is congruent to OQ. So all four of those segments have to be the same length, okay? And that's because they're the radius of the same circle. Notice I just kind of put my reason down there, radius of the same circle. So that tells us that these are isosceles triangles, okay? So we have isosceles triangles, and if isosceles triangles have two congruent sides, the base angles opposite them have to be congruent. So this base angle, this angle has to equal this angle, and this angle has to equal this angle. Okay? So we know angle N has to be congruent to angle M. Angle P has to be congruent to angle Q. So that's the base angles theorem. that back up from the other section. So since N is congruent to M and M is congruent to, since M is congruent to N, N is congruent to P, P is congruent to Q, we can show that angle M is congruent to angle Q. That would be the transitive property. So we have angle angle and then we have a side. So angle, angle, side is what we're using there, angle, angle, side. So we show, we know N is congruent to P, we've proven that M has to be congruent to Q, and then we know all those sides are the same length. So we can conclude this up, triangle M, N, O has to be congruent to triangle P, Q, O, and that's the angle, angle, side congruence there. Okay. So I believe that wraps it up for 5.6. Uh, just looking through your assignment real quick. Uh, state the third congruence statement needed to prove this by this congruence theorem. So you have to say, okay, they're giving us a side, a pair of congruent sides, a pair of congruent angles. You'll need one more pair of congruent angles to fit the angle angle side. And you have to decide which one that would have to be. Okay, so G and M is what's given. G, H and MN is what's given, so to fit angle, angle, side, it can't be angle N because that would be angle, side, angle, it'd have to be angle L and angle F. Okay, so that's kind of how those questions work. You need to figure out what piece of information do you need. Um, there's your, what error did they make? Questions? And a couple proofs. That's a long one. Okay, again, fill in the blanks. And then your review questions are dealing with midpoints. So let me know what questions you have, and I'll see you in class.